Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number three on using the most excellent SketchUp 3D CAD software. And what we're going to do today is it's going to be a pretty quick lesson, but we're going to uh, we're going to learn how to interface, how to actually design something in SketchUp that we can then print out to our 3D printer. So in our first lesson we learned about how to draw and dimension things. In lesson number two we learned how to create a 3D object and now we are going to go through the whole thing, design a 3D object which we then print to our 3D printer. Okay, so we're going to design a rather simple object because the purpose here is not to do a really complicated design but to get the kind of whole workflow where we can dimension something design it and then get it out on the 3D printer. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right in. Okay, we've got SketchUp on. I am working in feet and inches and I will select. I will select Mr. Whoever he is here and click delete to get rid of him. I am not going to delete myself, but I will get out of your way. Okay, and what we're going to do basically is, is just try to get our, our software working with our printer. And I realize everyone is going to have a different printer, but it should be extremely similar no matter which printer you have. So what we want to do is we want to create a cube. That cube is going to be uh, have its corner at the origin, and it's going to be one inch by one inch by one inch. Why do we want to do that? We just want to see how accurate our printer is. Is it generating in printout what we're designing on the screen? So this is that first try to get SketchUp talking to the 3D printer. So let's design a cube. What do we want to start with? We want to start with the rectangle. We get the rectangle tool. We come down. What did I say? Dimension and location, the location, the corners in the origin. So we come down here, let it pop to the origin, come out an arbitrary amount. Now I am in feet and inches. So to get inches, if it was feet, it would be like one apostrophe. But I don't want a foot, I want one inch. So I just put one. Yeah, let me uh, finish. Yeah, I put one and then comma one. And that should be one inch by one inch. Ooh, that got very small. So I'm going to have to zoom in. I zoom in using the little wheel on the mouse. Okay, now I'm going to pan down. I get the pan hand. Okay, and there it is. Zoom in a little bit more. That looks good. <clears throat> now that's one inch by one inch. I also want it one inch high. What is the easiest way to extrude? I'm not going to do that nonsense I put you through in lesson two where I showed you. 27 different ways to create a 3D object. We're going to do the easy one here. We're going to get the extrude tool, come down, click on the face, come up, click again, then just say a dimension one, enter. So that should be one inch by one inch by one inch. What a beautiful cube we have made. Now, there's one other little thing that I will want to do. And that is, you've got to think that its precision in the z-axis might be different than its precision in the x-axis, which might be different than its precision in the y-axis. So I actually want to label these sides so I can sort of know what's what once I print it. So I'm going to come and I'm going to say Tools. I'm going to say 3D Text and I am going to put a big X and so I'm going to type in capital X and then what I want is I want 0.5 in height and I want 0.1 in uh, the depth and then I'm going to say place okay there's my X okay now I'm going to orbit my view because I want it along the X axis along the red axis and so I'm going to put my wheel down I'm going to spin around to this face which is the X axis and I'm going to put it there on the X axis and now I'm going to get tools, 3D text, and I'm going to put a big Y. And I still have the dimensions from before, so I'll say place. And then this is going to be along the Y axis here. Okay. And then I'm going to do a Z for the top. So I'm going to come tools, 3D text, and I'm going to type in a Z. Okay. Place and put that there. Okay, 
That looks pretty good. So I have X, I have Y, and I have Z. All right. Now, this is the thing. You cannot, in most uh, slicer programs, most uh, 3D printer slicer programs, you can't import the native STL file. So mine, my printer will actually use an OBJ file. And so I could come over here and I could export 3D model and I could select an OBJ file and then I could put it into my slicer software. I'm not sure that all slicer software can do OBJ. If you can, just do the OBJ and you're done at this point. But if you can't, almost all slicing software will take STL. So what you need to do is you need to get the STL export uh, extension. So you come down here, you go to Extension Manager. Okay, that was not right. You come down here and you go to Extension Warehouse. <clears throat> and what you want is just type in STL and then search. And it will take a second. Okay, here you have SimLab STL Importer for SketchUp. I don't just want to import this SketchUp STL looks good because it says import and export STL. So I'm going to select SketchUp STL. Takes a second to get it. That looks good. And then I'm going to enable it. Okay, the extension has been enabled and is now available for your use. Okay, boom. Let's see if anything else is needed here. Give it a second. Seems like it's happy. Now I'm going to close that window. Now if I come over here under File, look at that. I've got Export STL. Export STL. So I'm going to export it and I'm going to, I want to export everything. I'll use the model units. ASCII 2 is fine. And then I'm going to export. I'll just put it on the desktop and then let's call it uh, Cube cal for cube calibrate because that's really what I'm trying to do and so I'll say save all right now I will kill that I will kill that let's see here I've got a cube cal so that looks good now I'm gonna come to my slicer software okay I'm gonna come to my slicer software I am using idea maker for the raised 3D printer. All of these slicer things work pretty similarly. So I'm going to get that file that I just exported, the cubecal.stl, and I'm going to drag and drop it over here. It says the model size uh, is too small and maybe an in inches measurement. Do you want to scale? Yeah, so you see this is in mil millimeters. The, uh, the thing that I did was in inches, and so it's going to correct that. All right. So let's look at this. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> move this around. Okay, I've got the X, I've got the Y, I've got the Z. That actually looks pretty good. All right, that looks pretty good. So at this point, you should have the STL file in your software. I'll let you go ahead and watch me. Yours is probably going to be different, but what I'm going to do now is I am going to slice where I just say start high quality PLA that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna say slice okay and now I'm gonna upload it to my printer and it's the raise 3d printer I'm gonna say upload okay so cube cal should be there now all right now I connect to the printer that looks like the one I want click there it's connecting it is coming up to temperature. While it's coming up to temperature, I'm going to tell it to print. Print what? Print from my local storage. And there is the cube cal. Okay. It's there. And I'm going to say print. Okay. Uh, that is what it is going to print. I am not going to panic yet. It looks like it is enormous. But if I come back over here, it looks like it's the right size. I think it's just showing me that portion that it's going to print kind of zoomed in. Okay, so it says that it's going to take an hour and 21 minutes to print this, and so I will come back in a minute, and we will see what happens. I will pause it, and we will see you guys in just a second after this thing is printed. So, 
Okay, guys, we are back and we have a printout. Let's see if you can see this. Hopefully you can. You can see that that's the X. That is the Y. And then that is the Z. And so it printed it out. It looks square. It looks very precise. But the question is, how accurately did we actually do this? Now, this is really kind of important because you want to know how accurately is your printer calibrated with your SketchUp software. And if you have your printer set up right and your slicer set up right, it should be very accurate, especially if you have a good printer. I think I mentioned that I'm printing this on the Raise 3D most excellent N2 3D printer. Now, if you're going to get into 3D printing and you don't have some of these digital calipers, click on the link below down in the description, uh, my top tech boy.com website to the article associated with this video and I've got a link where you can get a really nice pair of these uh, digital calipers and they don't cost very much I think they're under 20 bucks <clears throat> and they will al really allow you to uh, it's just it's a must-have tool if you're going to be doing uh, doing 3d printers so you can visit there and get these yourself but let's see how well this works first of all if I just look at it it's very, very precise. It's a very, very beautiful printout. I do notice that the first layer that went down, <clears throat> that layer is just a little bit wider. So there's a tiny lip around the first layer that is printed. And I think what happens is when it lays down that first layer, it just squeezes out a little bit. And then after that, it is absolutely perfectly dimensioned. So I'm going to look along the y-axis and I've got this set in inches and let's see what this reads this reads set in inches let me see if I can show it to you can you see that 0.998 inches and so that's within two one thousandth of an inch in that dimension I mean along that axis let me go along the x-axis and see what we've got okay here we have got 1.001, 1.001, that's within a thousandth of an inch along the uh, x-axis. The z-axis would be the one that might be a little bit different, okay, and let's look at that exactly one exactly one inch and so that is pretty darn good in the three axes we're within two one thousandths of an inch that is incredible now when I was measuring that I was deliberately going around that bottom lip right I wasn't going across the bottom lip let's look across the bottom lip and let's see what we measure if we uh, actually go touching that bottom lip and here what you can see is it's one point uh, let's see if you can read that 1.02 okay so that's 21 thousandth so it seems like that first layer that it lays down is about 20 thousandths of an inch or two hundredths of an inch uh, of a little bit wide I'm not going to worry about that because if that was a mission critical dimension we could just <clears throat> buff that little uh, that little lip off I really can't see it with my eye, <clears throat> but I can feel it with my finger. Uh, feel it with my finger a little bit of an edge there. So this is just pretty darn uh, neat. I guess I should have made myself big here. You probably could have read that better if I'd made myself big. So let's look at this again. This is in the z-axis. In the z-axis, we are just right there. One point. 001 inches within a thousand so you can see that this really is quite quite accurate okay <clears throat> if you guys don't have a 3d printer man the more that I'm using this raise 3d the more I love it I've got a link where you can get one on uh, the link below will take you to toptechboy.com and then that will have a link to where you can get this raise 3d printer this is a little bit pricey for home use but if you're a part of a college like a, a university a, a junior college or a school uh, you know hit hit someone up and get them to uh, get them to get this printer because it really really 
uh, is a, a, a really nice one. Also, for home use, you know that I've uh, suggested I also have the Persa. The Persa Mark II is a really great printer that's under $1,000. So these prices are getting down to where really they're affordable for home use. And so anyway, this was our first attempt to actually print something from SketchUp. I'm going to say it was a success. Hope you guys have been able to follow along. Again, this is Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com. If you like the video, think about, think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. Maybe share this video with other people. All right, so in this video, what we did was we did our first printout. What I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to show you how to kind of start designing some little calibration tools because you got to think like if you're if you're printing something and you need a pen to go in a hole, how much tolerance do you need so that something's a tight fit or a slip fit or a you know actually a press fit? So we need to need to make some test devices to start understanding uh, what our dimensions are. It's kind of to a little bit more understand our design rules. So this is Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.